Welcome back to Austria, where it looked as though three teams at the top of the table could head into the winter break unbeaten. That was until the most recent round of matches, where one of those three teams blinked first. The good news is it wasn't us why we were picking up a 5-1 victory at home and Liefering were winning 3-0 in their game. Unfortunately for Old Tatch, they conceded a 94th minute goal to Hartberg to mean that they are the first team out of the top three to lose a game this season. It's incredibly tight at the top of this table. We're on 33 points, Altac are on 34, and then a little bit ahead of us on 39 are Liefering. But because of their affiliation with Red Bull Salzburg, Liefering cannot get promoted. It's between us and Altac. So although we might not be in with a hunt of the title, we are still in with a chance of sealing promotion. I think we should show you the form since our last episode. So I was starting to think we were throwing in far too many draws in our run of undefeated games to really be in with a chance of promotion. In the last episode, you saw us pretty toothless in that 0-0 draw with Altac. We drew 1-1 in the next game. We then knocked Altac out of the cup and we were 3-1 up in this game. So we did pretty well to win that and we've actually made it all the way through into a quarter final and in that tie we're going to be playing another team from the same division as us and they are in the relegation zone currently so there is a chance that we could make it into the semi-finals of the cup that would be some achievement but after we knocked out all tack from the cup we followed it up with yet another draw i'm afraid nil nil and another game where we huffed and we puffed but we couldn't really find a breakthrough and unfortunately, it meant that we were then four points behind Altac at the time. So I decided to tweak the tactic. We're still in a 4-4-2 shape. We'll show you the tactic in a moment. But I've changed some of the player roles and some of the team instructions. And the players have responded by finally finding the back of the net. We were a goal down in this game, but we eventually won it 4-2. And in our most recent game... We were pretty impressive, I have to say. And I think a lot of the credit needs to go to this man up front. I was getting a little bit tired of the striker Ivekic that we were playing. He was playing okay, but never really scoring any goals. So I decided to give Enis Fidani a couple of games and he scored a brace in both of them. He's not as quick. In fact, on paper, I don't think he's as good as Ivekic, but he is the man that is in form. So I'm going to keep with him today. He's got an 8.3 in both of those two games that we gave him a bit of football in. He only came off the bench in the game before last. We started him in the game after that. Four goals in a game and a half means that he's going to get the nod today. But today is going to be a very, very difficult encounter, I'm afraid. We're up against an FC Liefering side who are unbeaten as well and they are difficult to score against look at the number of clean sheets that they've kept including what five in the last six games they are going to be a tough little proposition some of their players are worth an awful lot of money and i'm not sure that we're going to have quite the same quality of player that they're going to be able to send out onto the field this player is worth the best part of 10 million pounds they are going to have quality all over the pitch due to their affiliation, I think, with Salzburg. It's going to be a tough game for us. However, we've got some news off the field to update you on as well. And the news is that we finally got our Continental A license confirmed. It's taken us a full 12 months to complete it. We started it way back when we were with Gornick Shabshire. But we've now completed it, so we've got just one qualification left to do. We're still a two and a half star reputation manager, but crucially, it's now up to 50%. And that media handling is hot on the heels, 39%. Although, for some strange reason, we're at a big club. We don't have many press conferences called at Austria Wien for some reason. But we have had some little boosts in our attributes now as well. So we've got 20 for level of discipline. 13 for people management, 11 for motivating, and they've now got attacking coaching and defending coaching and technical coaching all in at 10s. Tactical is at 11. 
We're going to go into the boardroom now, but I don't hold out a lot of hope. We're going to ask them anyway. Let's make the request. It's going to be a personal one. We're going to ask to start a coaching course. Let's spin forward a day and see whether there's any joy. As feared, they have turned us down for that coaching badge, but we will jump into the boardroom. Rather nice one at that. And we will say, I would like permission to go on a coaching course to further my development and improve as a manager. And they say, the club is not in a position to afford that right now. Sorry, £2.13 million. How much do you think this coaching badge is going to cost? I fear that means we could go through our entire time in Austria and never be able to complete our final badge. We might have to make it a stipulation of the next club that we join. I think before we get out there and play our opponents today, we should show you the tactical changes that we've made. They are subtle, but in the last two games, they've made a big difference. So let's start with those changes of roles, because I found we've gone a little bit stale in our current system. We were struggling to break teams down, so I'm trying to give the team a little bit more impetus to that effect. We've now our Schick at right back to play a fullback on attack. His legs are not as strong as they once were. He's 35 years old now, but if he could get forward, he's a reasonable crosser of the ball. I just worry whether he'll be able to get back again, but we are asking him to be a little bit more adventurous. And then we've also got Ennis Safin, who we've asked to be a wide midfielder on attack for the moment rather than a winger. He wasn't being very influential as a winger. But we've asked him to play as a wide midfielder now. And he seems to be a little bit more involved in the game and has even managed to get himself on the score sheet. But I think the big change we've made is in our central midfield pairing. Rather than playing a central midfielder on defender with a box-to-box -box midfielder and playing two pretty tough tacklers in there, we have brought a new player into the team in the form of Arman Schmerka, who is a little bit more offensive. He's got good passing and incredibly good vision. He's reasonably fit. Although, in terms of just being part of a two, I'm not sure he's going to win too much ball for us. But he has been a good player in the last couple of games. And I think he might be able to have an effect on the game today. He's already got himself one assist in just the two starts and three appearances that he's made. And I think just having a player just moving into slightly more advanced areas and having license to be a little bit more risk-taking in their attacking play has helped to score so many goals in our last two games. But we've also made some changes in the approach we're making to games as well. We are now trying to force the play down the wide areas. And I've also been asking the players to play with more width as well, really trying to make use of the two wide players that we've got in this system, as well as a right back that's now taking up more advanced positions. It's led us from struggling to break teams down to scoring a hat full of goals in the last two games. Is it going to work today? Well, I think that could well be up to our mate up front, Ennis Fidani. If he can carry on his rude goal scoring form, we might just stand an outside chance against a team who are going to be incredibly strong. We're going to have Cristiano Ivkic on the bench. This guy is our top performer in training every single week. He's developing into what looks on paper like a very good striker and his average rating undeniably is quite good but only three goals in 12 appearances is a little bit light for your starting number nine for my liking he's being outshone by our deep lying forward Shaba Meshta who's playing far better he's got 10 goals in the league so far this season easily his best goal scoring season since he became a professional footballer he's averaging 7.71 could well be in the three players that we offer up at the end of the season as our player to keep an eye on from our time with FK Osterivine. But we've got to get on to today's game. Let's show you the scouting report about a team that I fear are going to be very stubborn opponents. For today's game, the Red Bull bus rolls into town as we take on the reserve team of RB Salzburg, a club that were Bundesliga 2 champions in 2024 and who are undefeated this campaign and are currently topping the table. Look out for young stars such as USA international Brian Oko and Croatian under-21 striker Rocco Simic. Rene Aufhauser's men have looked invincible so far this season and this promises to be a tough afternoon as first take on third as Austria Wien face FC Levering. 
So the players are making their way out onto the pitch. This is going to be a tough one. Leafering are a full six points ahead of us in the table. But that doesn't matter. They can't get promoted. So we're not really in a battle with them. If we want to be crowned champions, yes, we'd need to finish above them. But we could come second in the league. And as long as it's leafering that ahead of us, we will pick up that promotion place. So it really is a battle between us and Altac. But this is the game where I fear our unbeaten start to the season is going to come to an end. But if you had said to me that we would go the first 16 games of the season unbeaten, I would have taken that. I wouldn't have thought that would have meant that we were in third place in the table, but I would definitely have taken it. And this game, well, this game is really a benchmark, a barometer, if you will, as to whether we are likely to really push Altac for that promotion place. They've got a far more expensively assembled squad at the end of this game, I might just show you how much each club in this division is spending on wages. Where we are might just surprise a few people, given the size of our club. But we've got to navigate this game through first, and our opponents have got a corner, which they've headed over the bar, and we've got to the 15-minute mark of this game. And we have not really been involved in it so far. In fact, with 20 minutes approaching, I think we're going to demand more of these players because we've not even registered a shot during this game in anger, never mind on target. But we've still got plenty of time. Here's young Becker, another player who's getting in the nines in training every week. He's not always putting in the best performances on the pitch, but in training he's doing very well. And he's getting the nod at the moment as one of our starting centre-backs alongside the veteran Vostri, because our other centre-back, Strauss, is still recovering from an injury. Verdat Yilmaz, I think, has pushed somebody in the box. And we are going to be relying on Vervusta. 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 Yeah, yeah. To bail us out. And unfortunately, he's not been able to do that. And Rocco Simic. Is that a made-up name? Rocco Simic has fired Liefering into what was an expected lead. But we've not really put up much resistance at the moment, have we? And I've also noticed that our young starlet, Uwe Furstenhofer, has picked up a little knock. That is a blow because this player is our top performer this season. Eight assists, three goals, an average rating of getting on for eight. And unfortunately, he's being hampered by injury. We're going to have to make a little change. You never know, the player we bring on might be the one that gets the equaliser. Okay, racing towards half-time. First and Hoffer is off. We've brought on our backup left winger. And we've got into the highlights. Here is Safin. He's got the ball back to Yilmaz, the man that gave away that penalty. He owes us a little something, I feel, after that. And this looks like it could be a highlight for us. There's Meshter dropping deep. OK, it's not going to be a highlight for us. I was fooled by the fact that we were deep into opposition territory. We've given the ball away. And now our opponents are just dancing around us. We're not even laying a glove on Dayakato as he comes forward. Oh, goodness me. We are not looking at our best this afternoon. This is going to be our toughest team talk of the season, I think. We have been poor. And as we pause... I think Altac are ahead in their game because they are looking like they are back to being four points ahead of us in the chase for that promotion place. This game feels like it could be a bit of a turning point, this one. Still, we're into the highlights again. We are on the ball. Koffler lays it back to Varvush and Becker. And we're bringing the ball out of defence. Here is Schmucker. Gets it to Koffler, Meshter. We're playing some pretty composed football and then we play the more direct ball and give it away straight away. We can see the second on the stroke of half time. I think we might have to do some rejigging for the second half, but we've won the ball back again. And I was about to say, well, let's just get to the half time interval, but we haven't. We've got another highlight to navigate and they're coming forward again. And this player is in acres of space. He can't shoot for a bag of toffees. We gave him so much room on the edge of the box. That is a really poor first half. An XG of 0 0.06 is absolutely no way to play when you're trying to chase promotion. I think we're going to have our sternest team talk yet. Maybe even some tactical tweaks. Maybe even our second change of the game.
We've got Vostri, we've got Schmacker, we've got Meshta. Maybe with that advanced playmaker, we don't need Meshta dropping so deep. I'm not sure. We've gone forward. Here he is. He's driving forward. It's an effort. It's a poor one. And we need to... I think we need to make a couple more changes, to be honest. We've got three players in the advanced positions all performing really poorly. Just I fear we don't have the players on the bench to make a difference. On 65 minutes, I think we're going to make our next change. But we're going to have to navigate another highlight first. We've at least got the ball. Schick has not been anywhere near the attacking fullback we've asked him to be. I've not seen him get forward at all. Although here is the player that came on for first and Hoffer. He's in. It's the best chance we've created. Unfortunately, he could not take it, could he? Still, we're on the corners. First and Hoffer would have been taking them. Instead, Schick deputises. Hasn't quite got the same delivery. And I think on 65 minutes, it's time to make a change. I feel like Fidani's going to go. Maybe we might make both of our final substitutions now. Okay, approaching 15 minutes left to play. We've brought some substitutes onto the pitch. They've not been involved so far. And we're just really struggling to make any kind of breakthrough. We've got Ennis Safin playing above a seven, showing that playing that wide midfield role He's performed once more, but everywhere else, I'm afraid. It's been pretty dire, and our unbeaten run is going. This will leave our opponents as the only unbeaten team in the division. And it's also going to mean that we are going to be losing ground on all tack. They are 2-1 up in their game. You never know. They could concede a late equaliser. Maybe that's a bit of wishful thinking. We're going to demand more of the team. That's elicited a good response from the body language. And now we're also finally into the highlights again. We don't have the ball, but at least something's happening on the pitch. We've got five minutes left to play, plus stoppage time. And we need something a little bit miraculous in this final five. It doesn't look like this is a highlight for us, though. We look wide open at the back. No challenges coming in at all, and we've con conceded another goal. It's Rocco again. And this is our worst performance of the season. As Altac go 3-1 up in their game. This feels like this is moving day. The two teams ahead of us in the table are just putting us in our place a little bit, I think. Okay, we're going to throw the kitchen sink at it. But I don't see two goals in the final, what, four minutes? And the clock is ticking down. What a poor performance. Only five shots in the entire game. Only one of them on target. We have been outclassed by a superior opponent in that game. And we're going to go into the winter break thrashing our arms and telling the players that that was absolutely not good enough. And it's going to have an effect on the table. Because that third goal for Altac just confirms it. They're four points clear of us. We're now nine points off Leafering at the top of the table. The title is absolutely gone. But we're actually looking down the table at those teams behind us on 31, 30 points. Rather than the team ahead of us that are four points clear. So I feel like this is an excuse that I should have got in before the game rather than afterwards. But this is how our salary per annum compares. To the other teams in the division, we're spending £1.3 million per year, pretty much half what St. Poulton are, and they're not really in the promotion contention, but Altac are over a million pounds per annum more than us, Leafering are about a million pounds per annum ahead of us, so we are overperforming, but it does look like with only one promotion place up for grabs in this league, we're going to have to have a strong final 14 games of the season. What are we going to be coming back for? Well, we've got to get the winter break done. And then we're going to play our Austrian Cup quarter final game. If that goes well, you never know. We could be coming back for an Austrian Cup semi-final in FM22 Mercenary.